Hey writer friend, I'm Kelly Notaris from KN Literary Arts and today I want to talk to you about something that actually is on, maybe the most important thing I could talk to you about if you're interested in being on a book journey. And this is something that's called the hook of your book. And if you've been following me for any period of time, you've heard me talk about this a lot, but I've never done a comprehensive video about the hook. And so that's what I'm doing today. I really want to help you understand what a hook is, why you need one, and how you can get a really good one. So what is a hook? A hook is the one or two, maybe three line description of what your book is about. You can think of it as an elevator pitch, which was named that because it meant when you got on the elevator with somebody really important in the book business or the movie business or whatever it might be, you're actually already prepared to tell them the one or two line pitch for your project, whether it's a book or a TV show or a movie, and they can get it between one floor and the next on the elevator. That's why it's called an elevator pitch. In the book business, we call it a hook. Really, it's meant to hook the interest of the person who hears it. And this will first be an agent, potentially, then maybe a publisher, and finally your actual reader of the book. And so this is a place that I find first-time authors, especially those who are writing transformational nonfiction, tend to have um, a bit of, of a difficulty because you know what it is that you want to write, the idea you want to communicate. And sometimes that actually is already a really good hook. It's already something other people are going to be interested in, but other times it's not. And really it's my job as an editor helping you along the path to let you know, hey, your hook's a little soft. We sometimes say it's a little mushy. And I want to help you get a sharp, strong hook. I want to help you get the kind of hook that when you say it, people go, wow, I've never heard that before. It makes perfect sense to me. I totally get it and I need to read that book. Okay, so in my book, The Book You Were Born to Write, I have an entire chapter on the hook. And in fact, when I submitted my book to Hay House, my editor emailed me and said, do I have your permission to share this chapter with everyone at the company? And I said, sure, of course. She said, it is the most succinct explanation of what a book's hook is, its role, and how to actually get a good one that she'd ever read. And so I want to give you the points that were bullet pointed from that chapter right here in this video. So I've got a little note card so you can see me looking down here. The very first thing that a hook needs to be is something called high concept. Now what does that mean, high concept? It was a word I started hearing as soon as I got into the book business and it took me a little while to really get it. But what it means is that it doesn't take you any time at all to get it. <laughs> so the, the high concept hook means that it's, um, it's a loud concept, it's an obvious concept, it's like a yes, you hear it and you know exactly what it is that you're talking about. So it's something that doesn't take a lot of explanation. It's just like you say one or two sentences and the, and the person who's listening is like, I completely get that and it sounds amazing. That's high concept. It's something that can be talked about easily in the media really important, can be talked about easily among readers. When they hand the book to their friend who they want to read the book, they say, oh, this is what the book is about, and they can say it in one or two sentences, and the other person's like, wow, I've been waiting for that for a really long time, right? So that's high concept. The next is something called narrowly tailored. And this is a place that a lot of my authors get into some trouble because we think, well, I'm writing transformational nonfiction. These are books that are meant to impact people's lives and really help them. This book would be a good read for anybody. Absolutely anyone should read this book. Everyone. My audience is everyone. And in the book business, you hear this, this saying a lot, if you cast your net too wide, you're not going to catch anything. And that really goes for what I'm talking about here when I talk about a narrowly tailored hook. You want a hook that actually knows and finds its audience. So if you decide to write a book about happiness, sure, everybody needs more happiness. Everybody wants more happiness. But that book is going to be hard for a reader to say, ooh, I need that one on a shelf that's already full of books about happiness. What someone's going to the bookstore with is a need. They're going with a pain point that they want to have help getting resolved. And they want to see the specifics from you in your hook, which is often reflected in multiple different places on the book jacket. So in the title, in the subtitle, in the reading line at the top of the back cover, in the copy, you're telling them over and over again, this is the hook, this is what this book is about. 
If it's basically a general topic like happiness, why would they buy your book as a first time author rather than buying Gretchen Rubin's book? She's a big, you know, huge New York Times bestseller who writes about happiness. Why would they buy it and not buy one of the many Tibetan Rinpoches who's written books about happiness lately? They're probably going to pick a book that's more well known than yours because it's, it's too general. But if you write a book about um, step parenting, happiness in step parenting, I'm choosing that because it's an easy example. That is a narrowly tailored hook. Okay. Like, we know who the audience is, it's step parents. We know what their pain point is. It's hard to be a step parent sometimes. I mean, it's hard to be a parent, let's be honest, but it's hard to be a step parent sometimes. So I'm gonna actually put my focus toward this particular category of people. And it might be a smaller portion of the wider marketplace, but that portion has never had a book written for them about happiness before. So when they go to the bookstore, they think, oh my gosh, this book is actually for me. It's not just for everybody, it's for me. So that's that's when I say narrowly tailored, I'm saying that we are hitting a small audience, but that audience is going to be super excited to get the book and they're going to tell everyone else that they know who's in that audience that they need this book too. That is how a long-term bestseller over time is born. A book that will have a lifetime of readership because there's always new people cycling into, again, I'm using this example, the role of step parent who are going to want to know how do I do this in a way that breeds more happiness in myself and my partner and the kids, right? So hopefully that helps you understand what I mean by narrowly tailored and and it gives you permission to actually choose an audience that's smaller than everybody really important that your hook transmits who the audience is and it's not everybody okay then we get into three other different qualities that are I'm gonna say a little bit more um, uh, difficult to, to pin down it's sort of we know it when we feel it so the first one is unique so many authors that I work with have been reading self-help, personal growth, spiritual memoir for a really long time. And they too have their story that's in the same vein as the authors who they've been following for 20 years. And when they come to the time that they're ready to write their book, they choose a hook that's exactly like one of the authors that they've worked with before, or maybe some sort of an um, amalgamation of the different hooks of the books that have been most important to them over the years. The issue with that is not that their book is not actually going to uh, make good on that hook. It probably will, but that hook is not unique. And again, when a new reader comes to the bookshelf, whether it's on amazon.com or another um, online indie retailer or walking into a bookstore, they're more likely to pull the book off the shelf by someone whose name they recognize. And so it's, it's not actually in your best service to choose a hook that you've read before. You want to choose something that's unique and new. Maybe it has some sort of a twist on it. So, um, so that's unique. Okay. And then the next one that's again, a little more ephemeral is magnetic. You can think of it as charismatic. It has something to it that's new and different, something that I've never heard before, but I want. And again, I can't actually give you a one, two, three step for doing this. It's more like I know it when I hear it. So to get, to get some read on whether something's magnetic or not, talk to a book publishing professional, a coach, an editor, somebody you, you know, have met through a friend, an agent, they will tell you whether it has that oomph. Now granted, it's a subjective result, right? Not everybody is going to feel that same charisma from your hook. But if you're, if you get at least some people who are say, wow, I've never heard that before. And I want that book. It's really important to me who are not your friends and family. Your friends and family love you and they're gonna be so supportive of you. You need to be asking people who actually have no skin in the game. They don't need you to be happy in order for them to be okay. <laughs> so that's, you wanna to talk to somebody who actually is not uh, going to say, yes, I love that idea because they're actually projecting their love of you on, on the hook, okay? So that's really important. Um, a good place to get a nice broad audience is to go on social media and to offer three different hooks and say, I might write a book about any of these three different topics. What do you guys think? Which one would you buy? And that's a good way to get people's actual honest response. And you're not saying, is my hook good? You're saying, which of these hooks do you like the best? And in that way, people, even your friends and family are gonna feel more permission to be able to to be honest with you. Finally, saleability. Okay, when it comes down to it, 
all that an agent or an editor is looking for when they are reviewing your book proposal or your manuscript is, is this book going to sell? All these other qualities of the hook are actually leading to this point. If it's high concept, if it's narrowly tailored, if it's unique, if it's magnetic, it has a really good chance of being saleable. And that is what we're going for. So even if there's a story that you are yearning to tell and or an idea or concept that you feel strongly that you want to say in the world, if it's not saleable, it's probably not going to be a book that a lot of people are going to want right? We need to choose a topic that actually has an audience that people are yearning for, that has a pain point very obviously in it that people are feeling and that they get the sense of, oh, this is going to actually heal that pain point. So all of that said, how about some examples? I've got a couple stacks of books over here that I want to share with you. So the first stack are primarily very practical books and you'll see that the more practical your topic, the easier it is to get a hook that actually hits all of these different qualities. So this is a book by a dear friend of mine, Fauzia. Um, it's called Online Marketing for Busy Authors. And this book is very, very obvious. How, how is that title? Okay. We are getting the entire hook in this title, Online Marketing for Busy Authors, a step-by-step -step guide. Okay, do I need to say anything more about that? There is no mystery here. She's not trying to be cute. She's not trying to be funny. She's actually just telling you what's in the book. And anyone who is looking, who's a busy author, on the road toward getting their book out into the world and, and building a publishing platform, they know this book is for them. There's no question and they need to have it, okay? So that's an example. This is by another friend of mine. This is a book that we did, um, we helped with at KN Literary Arts. It's called The Essential Cleanse by my friend Kate Reardon. She's awesome. Um, and the subtitle is 21 Powerful Days to a Lighter Mind, sorry, Body, Mind, and Spirit. That right there is a great hook. And you're gonna see that a lot of these examples I'm giving you have some sort of a number in the subtitle because somehow that tells me, oh, I have a three week program in this, bu in this book I can handle that. Three weeks sounds easy. And I'm going to have a lighter body, minded spirit on the other side. Oh yeah, I want that, right? So even though the title, The Essential Cleanse, doesn't tell you what kind of cleanse it is, it definitely gives you the sense that I can do that and I want a lighter body, mind, and spirit, right? So that's a really good hook. Another book we did at KN Literary, or we helped with, my friend J.B. Glossinger, The Sacred Six. This book's subtitle is The Simple Step-by-Step -Step Process for Focusing Your Attention and Recovering Your Dreams. Hello. Okay, so who's the audience for this book? This is anyone who has per perhaps a career, they're maybe a business person, maybe they're not happy in their job. They had dreams, they had dreams, but they haven't, they haven't actually fulfilled them. But this is going to be a simple step-by-step -step process, perhaps six steps, um, we'll, we'll find out, um, for focusing attention and recovering your dreams. So this, even though it doesn't state this book is for people who feel like they haven't lived their full potential, they haven't lived their full purpose, and maybe even um, the reason is that they're a little scattered. It doesn't have to say all of that because it, it's telling you what you get, and if someone has those pain points, they're going to know, oh, that's what I need. Okay, so are you getting what I'm talking about? These are very, very specific. They're very easy to understand. I get it as soon as I hear it, right? Okay. This is another, look at me choosing all these K and literary arts clients. Love this one. Bettina Gordon Wayne, um, The Joy of Later Motherhood. Subtitle, Your Natural Path to Healthy, healthy Babies Even in Your 40s. I mean, and look at the cutest. Look at the cutest, right? Her and her baby who she had in her 40s. There is no question who this book is for. There's no question what's in it. And I'm getting some sense of like, well, what kind of a program is? Because there's a lot of programs out there, right, that are about fertility and things like that. First of all, this is specifically for later motherhood. So anyone who's looking to, you know, get their, their pregnancy on in their 20s, this book is not for them. But somebody who is in their 40s and wants to get pregnant, there might not be that much out there. It might be all sort of like getting pregnant. And it's like, well, that's different. You know, if you're 20 versus when you're 45, it's a really different uh, journey. And this one tells you who it's for, right? And then also it's your natural path. So we have some sense of what that we're talking 
talking about maybe a health and wellness approach. We're not talking necessarily about a medical approach. So there's a lot of information that's that's telegraphed through the title and the subtitle. The hook is very obvious and it's very high concept and narrowly tailored. Okay. And then one more, this is one of my favorite books I've ever edited by the wonderful Danny Gregory. It's called The Creative License, Giving Yourself Permission to Be the Artist You Truly Are. And I bought this book for Hyperion back in the day. I think it was probably in 2004, 2005. And I bought it because I'd come across Danny um, and I just loved his work. Look at, he does, he does all, it's four color. It's all about journaling. It's all his drawings. And I myself was feeling stifled in my New York book career. And I wanted more creativity in my life. And I wanted to be the artist that I knew I was. And it's funny as time you know went on, I'm still in the book business, but now I work from home and I have my own company. And there was something about working with Danny that helped me. I knew when I saw this title that, that I needed this book, the creative license. I didn't feel like I had the permission to be a creative person. And here he's giving yourself permission to be the artist you truly are. There's no question this book was for me, right? There's just, there's nothing fuzzy about it. It's not, um, it's, it's not ephemeral. It's not just kind of like general. It's very specific. And that is what is important. Okay. And now for those of you who are spiritual beings, um, I have so many people who follow me who are writing books that are about spirituality and new age ideas and um, wellness, but from the psychological spiritual uh, viewpoint. And it is less specific than um, online marketing for busy authors, right? So how do you get a hook that works? Well, I wanna show you a few books that are in that same category that are sharper. They're still not, um, each one of these, I'm going to show you had a really significant author behind it in terms of their platform. So the less specific your hook, the more your platform is going to matter. You're going to already need an audience who will buy anything that you give them because if it doesn't say really specifically, like this is a practical guide to overcoming this issue or a practical guide to getting more of this really important thing in your life, then people aren't gonna know whether to buy it from you. They will buy it because they know who you are, right? The, the content, the topic, the hook is not the thing. So I wanted to just bring up a few of these. Um, <laughs> everyone wants to be Eckhart Tolle, right? I get so many people who send us book proposals where the number one comp title that they put in the proposal is an Eckhart Tolle book. Eckhart is, is one in a million. Okay, I just wanna say he is one in a million and I don't mean to say that anyone else can't be one in a million, but if you're looking at the statistics, there's way more likelihood that you're not one in a million when it comes to choosing what I consider to be a pretty soft hook for a book and having it still go on to be a mega bestseller. I mean, we do have Oprah's book club on here, right? So Oprah was a fan of Eckhart and if I remember correctly, the way that Eckhart first actually made it into the world was because he, he was, um, he had written a book called The Power of Now, which had been self-published first, and then he started building an audience and people started hearing about him. And then eventually, I think it was Meg Ryan, a celebrity, brought him to Oprah's attention on the show. And that was sort of the thing that took it to the next place, right? So I just wanna be clear that a new earth, awakening to your life's purpose, I mean, sure, if you already know that you don't know what your life's purpose is and you want to awaken to it, then you know this book is for you. But I would say the vast majority of people in the world don't actually know that they're looking for their life's purpose. Um, so this, this hook is probably not actually strong enough to carry someone who doesn't already have a pretty significant name recognition in the world, okay? So then we have the wonderful Tosha Silver, some of you will know who she is, Outrageous Openness. Now, if I'm a spiritual practitioner, I already know that there's something really important about openness and outrageous openness is openness plus more, right? So maybe I understand what that topic is, but if I'm not already someone who's been meditating or taking a lot of courses or things like that, outrageous openness is probably not going to get my attention. Then the, the subtitle is letting the divine take the lead. Again, it's a little bit better than just outrageous openness, but not by much, right? So if, if someone were coming to me and they were a brand new author who had no following whatsoever, Tosha did have a following and she's, she's an amazing badass of online marketing. So she actually has gotten the word out about this book and it has done exceptionally well, even with a hook that I wouldn't say is like a bam right between the eyes. 
Um, but if I had an author coming to me who was brand new, I would suggest they not use this hook because I don't think it's going to answer a pain point clearly to readers who don't already know who you are. And if you don't have a huge following, which many of the authors that come my way first don't yet have, part of what I help with is getting there, um, then you're, you're unlikely to find what you're looking for in terms of an audience with a hook like this, okay? Even though this is a brilliant book and I highly recommend everybody read it, it is not the first hook I would go for if you are writing your book for the, you know, your first book and getting it out in the world. And then finally, um, this one actually I think is the best of these three more spiritual topics, more spiritual books. This is called Soul Friends. It's published by Stephen Cope. And the subtitle is The Transforming Power of Deep Human Connection soul friends. So I look at the transforming power of deep human connection and I don't know what the pain point is that this solves. I actually am not clear what I, um, maybe it's if I'm feeling lonely, that's possible, but I'm not necessarily sure. However, Stephen Cope is an author who's well known in the spiritual world and he's written books before and he's got amazing soul friends <laughs> writing him really great endorsements on the back. And so he has a leg up. So again, this is this is a, this is kind of the type of title that I would normally see the kind of hook that I would see from many of our clients. And if you don't already have that platform, it's not that you can't have your book be about that. Go for it if that's what you really feel, and you'll probably end up self-publishing it. Is my guess because I don't see a major house taking on a first-time author with a title and, and concept like this. But the book may be fantastic, and then it gets passed hand to hand, and that word of mouth generates sales. And then over the course of time, you end up having the kind of audience that say Tosha has or Stephen has or even, God willing, Eckhart has. And then if you want to be published by a traditional house, they will come find you because they'll see your book selling on their sales lists. So this is the conclusion of this little um, lecture, I hope it's not too much like high school, um, about book hooks. And I really just want to say that this is one of the places that if you're feeling struggle hearing this, you're not alone at all. It is not the easiest thing to do. It's not the easiest thing to learn. It took me several years of being in the business to really understand what a high concept hook sounded like. And then it kind of gets into your bones. And so even to tease apart these five different qualities of high concept, narrowly tailored, unique, magnetic, and saleable was not easy for me because it gets to the point where it's just like, I, it's almost like I hear a bell ring when I hear a really good hook with a really good title and subtitle. It's like, ding, I know that that's going to work. I know that people are going to be interested in that. And if you would like to talk to me or anyone about it, I offer one-on-one -on -one consultations. This is my favorite thing to do. It is actually my zone of genius. And it's the only service I still offer to authors. The rest of my time is spent uh, managing our wonderful company and putting out free information for people like you. If you would like to talk to me, you can go to knliterary.com, hop to our questionnaire, and talk to one of our matchmakers. And they will guide you through the process of getting on the phone with me to talk about your hook is one of the things I love doing. As you can see, I'm passionate about it, and, um, and I'd love to help you. But either way, I hope this has helped you get into some sense of what a hook is and how you can make a really powerful one for your own book. And I'm just sending you so much goodwill and good wishes on your book journey. I hope that you have have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.